has never spoken a word to me for 19 years. Lot, I don't know how many times, but dozens of times, I would come through the night to his house out of the mountains. She would never say a word. I would come in with an entourage, sometimes up to 40 men. She wouldn't say a word. She would get up and fix us something to eat. Fix us somewhere to sleep. <laughs> That's who she is to me. And in 19 years, she has never face-to-face -face addressed me. She has done the work of the gospel without asking for anything. She has seen to the work of the Lord. Those are the people that need a hero. And that's what I am. I have been raised up in the power of God to be a hero. Full of the joy of the Lord full of expectancy and power, full of freedom and truth. I may not have very many gifts, but they are blessed of the Lord. And I can feed the multitude with what I've got. It is from the Holy Ghost. It is from the power of the gospel and the name of Jesus. I told my son who was running the conference, he looked at me. He was standing there. My son is a 32-year-old man. <laughs> Dad, get in your truck. You're going with me. No, I'm not. I raised you to lead these conferences. You don't need me. That woman needs me. She's taken care of me. She's taken care of you. She's served the gospel all these years. The least the gospel can do is go bring her deliverance. <laughs> he said, Dad, you gave me your word. I said, yeah, I'll be there sooner or later. <laughs> Dad, you gave all the elders your word. I said, that's right, son. I'll be there sooner or later. Now you get in that truck and you obey me. And he stood there a couple of seconds, sizing me up. I might be more than you can chew. I might not bite if I was you. He said, yes, sir. I'll be waiting on you. Good man. You smart as you look. I'll see you later. I got in my truck and left. I drove three hours one way. Walked up into that village. The husband wasn't even back yet. That's how long it is for him to get out of the woods. I sat in the chair. I wept. It had been a long time since I was by myself in a village. I could see in that hut, she was under serious pain. He comes finally riding up on his bicycle. You prayed for my wife yet? He never even said hello. Protocol was completely abolished. I said, no, sir, I haven't. Why not? I said, you weren't here. I won't go in that house. Come, I am here. I followed him in. He and I knelt down beside, just it was just the two of us. We knelt down beside this bed. This woman is in serious pain, tumors all over her body. I'm not, even though the situation is way out of control, I'm not allowed to touch her. I took his hand and laid it on what looked like to be the biggest tumor to me. Then I put my hand on his hand 
and he and I are on our knees and we ask God for mercy. We prayed, I don't know, 15 or 20 minutes praying in tongues and asking God for mercy. She came to out of a coma, looked over at me. Thank you for coming, Brother Hogan. Are you hungry? Yes. She got up, went and fixed me a meal. Completely healed by the blood of Jesus. Fuego de Dios. I like the joy of the Lord. I enjoy the power of the Spirit. Jesus is King and Lord. I came back to the ranch. Called Miss Hogan on the radio. Get me a cold Pepsi and get your clothes. We got to go. I got to make that conference. I got there. She had me a cold Pepsi. I told her the story about the healing. We loaded up in my truck. And on the way over there, the Holy Ghost reminded me of another situation <laughs> that I hadn't addressed. <laughs> it came to my mind that one of our elders... A man that's been my friend for 25 years. He and I go all the way back to the start. He was a young boy that the Holy Ghost brought to me. Got full of the Holy Ghost. I was at his wedding. I was at all of his children's births. Now I'm at his grandkids' births. You hear me? God called me to liberate those people at all costs. So I'm good. My problem, and it's a serious one if you ever want to try to visit us, I don't see the danger. I don't see the, 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 the severity of the situation. I see the people and I see the need. And I see the power of God in my life to bring deliverance. It's true. I reminded my wife, one of our elders hadn't been coming to some of the meetings. I wonder why. I don't know. I'm going to drop you off at our son's house. I'm going to go hunt him up. Because that's not like him to be disobedient to the heavenly call. Now listen to how this is going to go. This is a day's work for me. I dropped my wife off in the, in the mountain where my son lives. Told her I'll be back directly. I went on up in the mountain. The other way from the conference. I parked my truck and I hiked up in that mountain. I hiked to this house where this pastor lives, one of our elders, a director. I'm standing there, I hadn't made a noise. I'm just standing outside. Protocol will not allow me to make a noise. You don't make a great to-do about yourself. He all of a sudden comes walking around the building, walks up to me. Thank you for listening to the Holy Ghost. I've been asking him to bring you to me. He said, you're welcome, come. I go in to find his wife, another one of my friends. He's taken care of me in the gospel for 25 years. Laying on the floor, on the ground, passing blood clots and tumors, dying. He said, Brother David,